In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take the second of two detailed looks at designing dramatic opening credits. We'll put a card in the YouTube channel so you can go back to the first tutorial if you haven't seen it. But let me summarize a few things that we showed you how to do in that one. First thing, we showed you how to take your major video track, which is an animated picture of the Earth spinning in space, and we were able to double the length of it from 31 seconds to 60 seconds. And then we showed you how to click on the track and use the beat detection to set the beats that we're going to use to control the timing of the entrance and disappearance of the names of our major stars in our fictitious film. And then the third thing we did is we went in and we showed you how to design titles that kind of match the coloring of the globe here in the background and drop them in one after the other. Now on this tutorial we're going to finish up by handling our movie title and doing some other ending stuff. So I have the four major actors here on track number two and I actually copied a fifth version that will be the the basis on which we design our title. So I'm going to have to decide how long in terms of beats I want my title to come in. I'll take the fifth unit here and I'll drag it over to this beat marker 5203 and that will be the length of it. Now we're going to double click on it to get into our title designer and here we're going to put the name of our movie and our name is Lost and Forgotten and we're going to change it from the title of the actors and actresses so with it highlighted I'm going to change the size of it I want it at 40 I don't see a 40 in here but again all you need to do is drag over the number and you can type in any number you like and then I have to decide where I want it to come down to I'm going to take and drag it about maybe to here and then I'll click right here and do my uh, horizontal center. Now it inherited the features of the other titles which is a slide down if I hover over the the darker bluish uh, green area and the the ending is a fade. Now I want to change the ending of this as well as the size of the text so I'm going to click on my effect and I'll go to I'm in my ending effects and I'm going to do a dissolve down near alphabetical and that will be my ending effect we're going to change the length of both of these in a minute I'd like to show you how to do that I'll click on OK for now so what I want to do is if I back up just a little bit here uh, I have my Lucy Lou come in and then we'll go ahead and have the title come in Now one thing I'd like to have the title do that takes a little bit of trial and error, at least on my part, was I'd like to have it chase the uh, image of the Earth down so it doesn't actually come on top of the Earth, but as the picture of the Earth moves, so does Lost and Forgotten. And I don't want it on top of it like it is here. And so you have to work on some timings of in your title. Now after looking at where the beat markers were and where the object was moving I came across a couple of numbers I think will work this may take a bit of trial and error if you're trying to do the same thing so uh, I'm going to lengthen the uh, take out the end here where I have the second one go all the way to the end of the clip and I found if I do my drop down and I need again I need to click on the right clock which is my movie time code not my clip time code uh, what I found would work would be about 45 seconds and 11 frames Just something close to that let's go let's go uh, 12 and then I'm going to take my dissolve time code and just bump it up against that because it takes a while for the dissolve to start Then I'll click on OK and if I did that right in this case it should chase the, the globe down let's see if it's it's going to work here
hard part in doing this was getting the dissolve to hit right on this beat marker here. Uh, so lost and forgotten, and I, I think the dissolve is really good with the idea of forgotten. It just kind of uh, shows how the characters in the movie will be forgotten because the title just kind of disappears on that beat. So that gives me my title. Now I'm good there. Now I only have one other thing to do, and then I have to transition from the blank space here with the title having disappeared to my next segment. So I'm going to take this clip, which I actually pulled from a very old screensaver I had, and drop it down and put it after that. And what I'm going to do, it has an audio track. I can either split audio and video and delete the audio, or I could just mute the track. I think the best thing to do would be to split it again, link and unlink, and then click on the audio here and delete that. And then I need to resize it because it's a little smaller than my screen. And so we're going to go ahead and work on the handles and make that larger on one side, larger on the other. And that would be good enough. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like when we play the clip. I like where the strings come in at this beat marker. It's a perfect place uh, to transition into this final clip. Now that's where I want to stop because I'm running out of clip. And so we'll go ahead and, and work on our audio track. The best thing we can do is we will just go ahead and hold the control key down and we'll set a couple of uh, markers here and we'll just lower the volume and see if it fades out just the way it should. Then we'll actually cut the, the uh, audio clip in our final production. Let's go ahead and play this then. Okay, then I would normally, probably at this beat marker, I will cut all of my clips in my timeline. That will be the end of my opening sequence. Highlight these, do Control T to cut right there, and take, uh, take everything out. And so now I have my project that I can go ahead and produce, and we have finished our dramatic opening sequence. I hope some of the techniques here are those that you might find useful in your particular setting.